Hello, I'm Phil Nash. Sea Lion 2017.2 is here, and I'm going to take you through some of the highlights of what's new. Now, a big focus of this release has been working through some of those niggly issues that, in some cases, have been around for a while, and we'll see some of those in a moment. But that doesn't mean this is just a bug fix release. There are plenty of other great improvements, as well as quite a big new feature in the form of Clang Tidy integration. So let's start there. Now, Clang Tidy is an open source tool built on top of the Clang backend to provide extensible static analysis. One particularly nice feature is that it now supports quite a few of the C core guidelines. Well, now we've integrated Clang Tidy right into C Line, so it runs as part of the on the fly checking as you type, along with offering quick fixes, just like our own code inspections. To configure Clang Tidy support, you can opt in or out completely with this checkbox, which is on by default. For finer tuning, you can pass your configuration, as you would do on the command line, into this text box. This may develop into a richer UI in future releases. See the blog post for more on configuring Clang Tidy this way. Now, not all Clang Tidy checks are suitable for working this way, so some are disabled, but the majority are on. You can even write your own, although for now you will need to use our custom fork of Clang Tidy. We're very pleased with this integration but we're also keen to hear your feedback to guide future development. So please let us know through Utrecht tickets or by speaking to us directly. We've also been working on our built-in static analysis with many fixes and some refinements. For example, if you declare an object but don't use it, well, we've detected that for a while and offered to just remove it for you unless it has a non-trivial destructor. But now, if it has a non-trivial constructor, we offer to remove the named variable but leave the constructor call itself in place, thus preserving the semantics. We've also fixed many issues in existing code intentions. Here's a few of them. There was an ADL lookup issue with matching functions in different namespaces causing ambiguity. Well, that's now fixed. An issue with static const or const extra values initialized in the declaration. You're no longer warned at the implementation level. Inherited constructors were not being matched up if an alias name was used, and this was often encountered with some versions of boost or standard experimental optional. Again, now fixed. There were some issues with resolving types with enable if. Also now resolved. A couple of issues with variadic templates. These lines should not be errors. The ones at the bottom should, but different ones. and even an issue with variadic functions and the VA underscore macros, thinking that this variable was not used when it was actually being used by the macro. In this release, we're now bundling CMake 3.8. One consequence of this is that CMake now natively supports C++17, and so can be set with the CMake set command. But now that's there, when you create a new project, we've also added C17 to the drop down list of available standards. Talking of CMake, we check that the version of CMake that you're using works in the environment that you've specified. And if there's a mismatch, we'll show diagnostics about it. And previously, this error link didn't work all the time. Now, not only does it work, but it also gives you better diagnostics as well. We're always looking to improve performance in C Line. But in this release, it's been a particular area of focus. We fixed a whole host of issues and adopted some new strategies to all add up to some significant improvements. In some cases, it's just about giving you more control. For example, for large, complex projects, it can take CMake a while to load everything it needs. This is now a counselable operation, as is indexing. Go to subclass and go to overridden also have the same treatments. So if any of these become slow in your particular project, you can now cancel them too. But you might find the need to cancel things is much less now anyway, as raw performance has improved in many areas. It's difficult to show specifics, as they do vary from project to project, and even across different hardware. So try it out on your own project, see if the improvements are noticeable to you. Now a few enhancements with the debugger. When you inspect the contents of a container, the number of items shown at a time is limited. This is to avoid loading everything into the UI at once. But sometimes the limit of 50 items at a time is a bit too restrictive. So now you can set it to a new value 
by updating this number in the registry. Just use it with care, as too large a value may lead to timeouts or make the IDE less responsive. There have also been a few additional changes and fixes in the debugger. A command timeout with non-existent local processes. Backslashes in program arguments on Windows. And the step into disassembly feature that we introduced in the previous release, when you don't have the source code available, now requires you to use force step into instead. When using git, earlier commits can now be reverted using the new revert option from the log view. This will create a new commit that backs out the previous changes. You can also change earlier commit messages using reword. Note that this creates a new commit with a new hash, so don't do this if you've already pushed commits elsewhere. Talking of the commit messages, you can now set up some extra guides as warnings to help you keep your messages consistent and readable. You can even quick fix to fix individual issues or reformat all at once. In preferences, you can set up exactly what you want checked, including spell checking. In the last release, we also reworked Find in Path to offer a compact pop-up window with live preview on the main tab. We've added a few more things in this release. The gutter on the left now shows icons and markers. Multiple results from the same line are shown on one line in the preview too. If the focus changes back to the editor, the window disappears, but it's easy to get back to where you were again. And if you use Google Mock for testing, this is now detected, and a Google test configuration is created for you automatically. Your test will then run in the integrated test runner, just like a plain Google test project. And there are plenty more fixes and enhancements that we haven't covered here, including a fix for namespaces and nested template types in some GCC version, better high DPI support on Windows, and an out of memory issue when using Boost program options. You can always see more on the release site or the associated blog post. So thanks for watching. As always, you can download a free trial or visit the website for more information.